Hi friends, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a tool that we built as part of the Ultimate Cybersecurity Lab project and that was Nessus. So we went through the step-by-step -step process of building that tool. Basically it's using a Ubuntu VM and then we installed Nessus. So that was done in episode 3. Today I want to focus on the actual tool itself. Let's get logged in and pretend this is a real life scenario. Let's do some host scans and see what we can actually do with this tool. If you want to know how to install the tool itself and build the lab so it looks exactly like mine then go back to the very start of the ultimate cybersecurity lab project we build this lab from start to finish and it is a really good lab that will help you learn a bunch of different tools and it allows you just to do stuff like this just to play around with some scans and just pretend the real life which is what we need for learning basically so let's get stuck in and see what we can do with nessus Normally, whenever you are given the task to run a vulnerability scan, the first thing you would generally do, or the first thing you would ask for is a list of the subnets. That way you can create a new host discovery scan and you can run that to see what basically what's turned on and what is alive in those subnets. Let's review our ultimate cybersecurity lab network diagram and check out what VLANs or what networks we have available. So we have four VLANs. We have VLAN 1, 10, 20, and 30. They follow this convention of 10.10.1 and 10.10.10, 10.10.20, So we can then use those four subnets to create a scan in Nessus and then just to see what's alive and turned on. So back in Nessus here now, just click on new scan. I'm gonna click on host discovery. In here, I'm just gonna go ultimate lab host scan and I'm going to enter in the subnet so it's 10.10.1.0 slash 24 0 slash 24 and 10.10.20.0 slash 24 and 10.10.30.0 slash 24. So that will scan all of those subnets and bring back everything that is available. Nessus free version is limited to 16 hosts. So whenever we get all of the hosts back, whenever we get a list of everything that's turned on, we will choose a number of those to run the advanced scans on. So back here, I am just going to click on save. And then I'm going to click on this button to launch. And then we're going to run that scan and just see what it brings back. So the scan has completed. Let's click in here and see what it has found. So you can see it has found a bunch of different things on the, the 30 subnet, the 20 subnet, the 10 subnet. So you can see it's found a bunch of stuff. So this is my firewall 10.10.10.100. I know exactly what this is. This is actually a Metasploitable 2 VM. 10.10.20.10, .10 .10, so that's using port 135, 139. So that is our domain controller. So the good thing is we have a number of hosts here that are showing some open ports. So then we can potentially run some advanced scans to get more information on those hosts and see exactly what they are and see what vulnerabilities they have. So now we have an idea of the different hosts that we want to scan. As you can see, this 10.10.20. 10 looks like a really good candidate to be scanned that is a domain controller and then we have this 10 to 10 to 10 to 100 so again that's the metasploitable 2 vm i'm definitely going to scan that to see how much stuff is vulnerable on that machine i suspect loads so let's go over to all scans then i'm going to click on new scan and i'm going to select the advanced scan so let's click on that i'm going to give it a name Ultimate Lab Advanced Scan. I'm going to put the IP addresses of the server. So 10.10.10.100.20.10. .10 .10 that's my domain controller. Okay, and then I'm just going to click on Schedule. Now you could schedule this. You could set this up to run every single week if you wanted to. And then you can click on Notifications and you can get that to email you or a particular team. That's a good way just to automate these scans. So under Discovery, let's see what's here. So you want to ping the remote host, leave that on. That's okay. Port Scanning. We will leave a lot of this stuff as default. Let's do, let's go to service discovery. Probal ports, yes, I want to do that. All TCP ports. Identity, so you can collect identity data from Active Directory. I'm going to take that. Click on assessment. I'm going to move down to web applications. So I'm going to definitely turn that on so I get any information on applications that are deployed. For Windows, we can see, yeah, leave it as default. On the malware, Let's scan for malware in these machines. I'm just going to turn it on and leave the default config. Then let's go to databases. I don't really care about that. 
the report is um, the report that it will create after it's run the scan. So you can generate a report from the results, which is really, really handy. So under advanced, let's see what's here. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go back up to the tab and I'm gonna add credentials. So under SSH, I'm just gonna put in the default credentials that I've used for those Linux machines. Again, that just gives NASA's access to the VM to be able to log in and, and do deeper scans. So I'm gonna put the password in here that I've used for the majority of these VMs, which is fine. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to Windows. And because we are scanning our Windows 2022 domain controller, I'm gonna add in the domain admin password. So that was go admin. I hope I remember the password. And the domain was jar.local. Okay, I'm gonna save this. So that's gonna save this scan. So I'm gonna start that now. Now, the last time I did this in the dev version of this lab, it did take about 25 to 30 minutes. So hit launch and then I will see you in 30 minutes. Okay, so that scan finished. That did take around 20 or 30 minutes. So if we click in, you can see, so 22 minutes was the total time it took. And if you look at the two hosts that it scanned, so 10.10.20.10, that is our domain controller. And our 10.10.10.100 is our Metasploitable 2 VM. So 17 critical um, alerts, and then there's 23 high, what is this? So a 20 or 233 info. So let's click into the DC first. So it does give you a whole bunch of stuff that's wrong here that we need to fix. If you were doing this as part of like an engagement or you were a consultant in a company, this is where you could give all this information to like their patching team on their different teams to start addressing all of these vulnerabilities. Now, let's go back to our Metasploitable 2 VM. So let's click into that one. So 10.10.10.100. And as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff. Like this is the dodgiest VM there is. And it's really, really good because it actually there's loads of things that you can learn from this VM alone. Like, let's go to the very, very top one here and you can see the following NFS shares could be mounted. Okay, so that's that's pretty dodgy. Like, that's something we need to fix. Now, the good thing about this, once you've run your advanced scan, you can schedule this, but you can then convert all of this into a readable report that you can then give to the, the various different teams. So you don't need to give them access to Nessus. So just I'll click on report. From here, you can give them a list complete list of all the vulnerabilities by host. So let's first of all generate that one and we'll open it up and see what it looks like. So you can see here, so the host, so this is 10.10, this is mad exploitable too. It's telling me all of the alerts. So I click on show. It actually gives me all of the details, which is really handy. Let's go back to the results again. I'm keen to look at this one. One of the benefits of having Metasploitable 2 is because it is such a dodgy VM that you can find stuff like this and then you can actually try and get access to that machine using this method. Let's see if we can mount one of these NFS shares and see if it actually works. Let's open up Terminal. So if you want to follow along at home, the first thing you want to do is sudo apt update. Then you want to go to sudo apt install nfs common so run down to that that'll do the install i've already installed and tested this so it's already there for me the next thing you want to do is then create a new directory this is going to be the local mount point on your machine so i'm currently in the jared folder so i'm going to make a directory called um well, it's already there home nfs and let's type in ls to see if that exists. So it does, you can see it's actually there. To mount the home folder is actually really easy. All you do is sudo mount dash t, then nfs, then you type in the IP address of the machine, which is 10.10.10.100, colon forward slash, I'm gonna choose the home folder. Then I'm gonna find the, I'm gonna add the local mount point that we wanted to add it to. So it's home, jared, and I call that um, home NFS, wasn't it? I think it was. And that should be it, hit enter. Okay, so that has actually, I think that's done that. So let's now go into the, the home NFS folder. 
I'm just going to create a new file called touch. You have been hacked. Can't do that. Okay, so touch. Ah, why? Oh, I need to do sudo. Okay, done. So let's now go to the metasploitable VM and just check that home folder and see if that exists. Let's go to home. There you go. You have been hacked. <laughs> that is one of the good things about finding all these vulnerabilities because you can run down through that critical list of things and those problems. Like if we go back here to all scans and click in advanced scan again, let's go into metasploitable 2. Let's look at this other stuff around backdoors. There's so many things you could investigate and try and do and try and get access to this machine. So that's what I'm going to do actually. I want to try and see if I can exploit all of these different things that is available to me. But that is an overview of Nessus Essentials. So you can set up multiple scans. Host scans will find all of the available hosts that are online on your network. And then you can then use those hosts that are online to then run advanced scans and other scans. I'll let you have a look at all of the different scans that you can run. You can run a dedicated malware scan. There is some other stuff down here that has been created. Log4Shell and I've seen one around Conti as well that has given me um, nightmares. But I do really like this tool. It is good and I love that there's a free version because it's really helpful especially if you're in cybersecurity and you want to learn really so take full advantage of this actual tool. If you have any questions, if you know anything extra and cool things that I can test out in Nessus then please let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.